So, hello, Richard. How are you? It's great to see you here. Uh, hi, yes, I'm doing really well. Uh, it's, what is it, 10 past 8 in the morning over here on the west coast of Canada. So just, just getting started with my day, I had one cup of coffee so far. So that's, uh, that's how far I've, I, I've got with everything. <laughs> yeah, so how is it going in Canada? I think you've recently moved in there. Uh, yes, so we moved in September. Uh, we're in a small town called Terrace, which is in northwest BC. Uh, yes, it's, it's good. The weather is quite wet. Uh, but that means there's been an incredible amount of snow. So I've got like 30 days of skiing in this winter, which is a lot more than I would have got in the UK. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's just, just waiting for the just waiting for the lake to unfreeze, and then I can start sculling on it. And yeah, it feels feels like spring is on the way here, which is nice. Nice. Uh, but still, still in a sort of settling in phase really a lot of like unknown unknowns still well, that's, what it, that's what it feels like anyway but of course that unknown unknown so maybe maybe there's maybe there's maybe there isn't even any of them and I am like fully <laughs> fully like known with Canadian life I'm, I'm sure I'm not <laughs> you'll soon find out I guess I'm yeah well exciting. yes that's the thing you do find out <laughs> I still remember when I when I first moved to, to the UK, uh, that was all so exciting. I didn't realize I was having lots of problems because I was yes, almost blinded by the, the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, uh, were, were, were we meant to have done that? And they're like, yeah, yeah, everyone does that. And you're like, oh, OK, uh, all right. <laughs> have you got a favorite yeah. spot already or a favorite food? Favorite food uh, or sports poutine. in Canada? Poutine is the local dish around yeah. here, um, which is I don't know. It's just like chips and cheese and gravy, which I feel I've had from many a kebab van <laughs> over, over the years. But that's you know I like chips and cheese and I like gravy, so that's um, that is something I enjoy. Uh, sushi is a lot cheaper and a lot more normal thing to eat. Ah, here. that's good news. Um, so I've. Yeah, it is. It is. It is good news. I've only only had it a couple of times in the in the UK, and I feel like I've probably not averaged once a week here, but you know, multiple times a month <laughs> for for some sushi. So that's 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 really nice. Um, what's my favorite? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty boring with my food tastes. Like I just like a good burger and chips, and which there's plenty of options for that here as well. But that it's not really unique to to this area. <laughs> plenty of good meat though, <laughs> so yeah, that's always yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent! So, um, please tell us who you are and what you do. So, uh, yeah, audience... so I'm Richard Fergie, as you can see with the label on the screen. Uh, I am a consultant. I work with data, uh, mainly to do with marketing data and website data. Uh, do everything from tagging up the website through to how do we store and use this data, through to applying machine learning on the other end of it to try and get you know more useful stuff out of it. Which is which is kind of vague, but it's also an incredibly broad area um, where I can do lots of lots of little bits in lots of different ways so to, to say i'm oh i only work with e-commerce sites or i only work with transactional email data or something like that would be would be too specific so i think i think general is is the easiest way to describe it yes because you can apply data to so many things anyway to so many aspects of uh, of business you can do data for e-commerce websites you can do it for SaaS products so you can do it for government websites you can do it for so many um so many so many types of businesses so Dyson Broad is fine I remember yeah, I, think, I, I, I think I yeah. think it's because of my my background like I see I see the data first rather than the business which can be a bad thing but if you're looking at things that way, you see it all over the place <laughs> and all kinds of all, all kinds of things that you can do. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't see the data, <laughs> just see yeah, the visualizations, yeah. <laughs> the pie charts. <laughs> you know <laughs> it? No, no way. <laughs> or the donuts. <laughs> the oh, yeah, donut, donuts worse, huh? So, <laughs> well, I guess worse. one advantage of the donut over the pie chart is it saves you printer ink. <laughs> yeah, I remember I I met you at Measure Camp uh, quite a few years ago now. Time flies. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yes, you does. were um you were doing some workshops on Python, I believe. 
Uh, I think yes, I've, R, done, I've, done some, the I've done some. I've done a lot of R training with the yeah. measure camps, um, and I might have done a bit. Of, I might have done a bit of Python there. I try and I try and be tool agnostic um, in my work. Like they each have their um, they each have their they each have their benefits, and it's good to be able to apply the the most useful tool for the job rather than trying to think, oh, how am I how am I going to do this in Python rather than you know just just doing it in the easiest way. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, uh, do you do you use? Are you working on anything interesting at this moment in time? Anything that excites you? Uh, yes. So I've been doing a few little projects with the local ski hill, um, mm -hmm. and they've yeah. So I'm looking at we're looking at ways for them to better email their customers. So they're pretty they're pretty bad at that at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope they don't mind me saying <laughs> they have they have they have like one one list in Mailchimp of everyone basically, mm. um, and that's yeah that's that's kind of they, yeah they don't they, they don't even like to send emails to it because they know that most people on that list are not interested in a lot of the stuff they have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so what I can, what I'm trying to help them with at the moment is you know, seg segmenting the list based on what people have purchased in the past uh, so learning a lot about the ski industry um, and how you know I think they're quite uh, their, their cash flow is very uneven um, mm -hmm. people people buying seasons passes at the start of the season or people buying seasons passes sort of late summer and then they have the actual skiing season when money comes in although not necessarily enough to cover their operating costs uh -huh. uh, and then they have a big sort of starting from now they have basically nothing coming in until they are ready to start selling the season's passes again so things things around like oh email people who bought season's passes late last year to try and get them to buy earlier is um you know that's a that's a huge thing for them and get, actually getting some money in the bank <laughs> um, and it's, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that that'll work really well mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so if i can get that to work for them then i think there's probably a lot of other small ski resorts all over north america who would benefit from the same approach so uh, yeah i think fingers crossed that that turns into fingers something crossed. bigger <laughs> <laughs> and how do you think forecasting can help these businesses uh, or bigger businesses that's an interesting one. So I think of it in I think of it in two ways. Like if you have a, if you have a good forecast, then that's mm -hmm. you know that's basically seeing the future, and everyone can <laughs> every everyone can think that that would be pretty useful. And they're kind of like, oh well, this is what this is what's going to happen, so we can plan how to react to it. But I also think that a, a forecast is also it's a way it's a way of thinking about the world and a way of kind of specifying how you think the world works so you, mm -hmm. you can get you can get for you know in, in paid media you've got forecasts around like if we spend this much then we'll get this much in return and if we spend yeah. this other amount then we'll get this other amount in return and if we can get the new ad creative or the new landing pages launched then that's how this changes all these things so you have you have like all the th all the things that you think influence your business outputs and that combines together into a forecast so i think so that's that's the other way of looking at it and that way is almost separate from like how accurate is your forecast it's more about how do the, how do the inputs and outputs of your business relate um, and that's very very useful for making decisions because a lot a lot of the other a lot of the other forecasting ignores the fact that you're like an active participant in the business and that you know if the forecast says things are going down that doesn't necessarily have to be how it's going to be. Uh -huh. You can, you can, you, you will hopefully be able to make that forecast inaccurate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, th I think you were working on a on a forecasting tool, weren't you? Are you able yeah, to apply so, this to your to your business at the moment? Yeah, so I have a product called Forecast Forge, which brings in some machine learning powered forecasting. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Sheets. Please yeah, tell us so more about that. <laughs> yeah, so that's that started out um, as a lockdown project uh, for me back in probably like April 2020. So it's 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 getting old. <laughs> um, yeah, so that came about like I'd had I'd had forecasting projects before where businesses had come to me and said like, okay, okay, Richard, here's some data. Can you forecast it? 
or can you can you make us a forecast and i'd you know i'd go away and i'd crunch all the numbers i'd do the data science and then i'd, I'd have this forecast and i presented back to them and they'd be like oh wow yeah this is great it, but it's wrong here and i'd be i'd be kind of like what do you mean what do you mean it's wrong there like <laughs> you haven't done the numbers the way that i've that i've done like who, who are you to tell me that my <laughs> forecast that i've spent so long uh so long over and i've used all these fancy machine learning techniques how, how can you say that this is wrong and they'd be like no no it's wrong because we're uh, we're launching the autumn winter range then or you know we're we're going we're going into we're going into sale that week or you know the the new product lines are going to be ready at that point and then you're like, oh, yeah, of, of course it's wrong. <laughs> uh, ob obviously it's wrong. You're, you're totally right. It's wrong. Um, I, and it, but if, you, if, if I'd known that information when I was making the forecast, then it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been wrong. And that's, you know, that's partly on me, like not doing my discovery very well and not like finding out all the aspects of the business that might relate to the forecast. It's a bit of a two-way communication there between the yeah, business yeah. and consultants or or even people from the business, right? Because uh, mm, um, mm. I remember well, as, as an employee, I didn't used to have all the visibility, all the data that I needed. I needed to kind of scramble around to find turnover, turnover or anything else that I would need. So sometimes the communication breaks in there. Yeah, exactly. And as you say, that even happens internally. So it's it's very, very difficult for one person to have like that whole picture all at once. Um, but I, I, the, the, like this, this happened to me like a, a few times and I began to think that maybe like better data and better context around what was going on in the business, that, that gave you a better forecast than using like the fanciest new algorithm. Mm. Um, so Forecast Forge came about as a as a way to enable other people to add this context in for themselves. So like, it's a it's a pretty slow feedback loop. If I like present the forecast to them, they say it's wrong. We kind of try and figure out why it's wrong, or they tell me why it's wrong, and then mm. we need to like well, then we need to get some data about the extra context that is missing, and then I need to go and make a new forecast and then we need to present it to them again and then that's going to be wrong in some other way <laughs> and it just keeps it just keeps going round and round and round um like that in quite a slow fashion but by having the ability to add this extra context and add this extra data into a spreadsheet hmm. they they can they can almost do that themselves not so not saying that everyone has great success doing it themselves but a lot of people can do it themselves um and if you're kind of coming at it from a curious mindset and you want to see what kind of things can make a difference and you're not you're not afraid to like test out different ideas for your forecast mm. then you can you can get you can get very good results very quickly um without having to mess around with like coding python notebooks or or or, or anything like that yeah because we uh, don't really have the time to learn to learn r or python or the latest language we basically need a tool that actually um, helps us doing that but i i wonder for seo um, that can be very useful to you particularly when it comes to uh, when it comes to different um you know asking for budget for example at the end of the at the end of the year perhaps uh, how have you ever used it for SEO purposes? Yes, I have quite a lot of people who do use it for SEO. Um, mm. It's 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 kind of it's kind of challenging for like the machine learning forecasting approach is challenging for SEO um, mm. because the machine learning can only ever base its predictions on what it's seen during the training period. Okay. And a lot of what you're doing with SEO is you're like, oh, we're going to do this new thing that hasn't been on your site before. Mm -hmm. um, like it's it's if you're like, OK, what's we want to forecast the impact of fixing your title tags, say, or fixing your uh, href lang implementation or, or whatever, whatever it is. Like it's 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 possible that at some point in the past that's been working and then it's broken and then it's been working again and then it's broken again. Um, and in that case, the algorithm can learn what the impact of that change will be. Mm -hmm. But 
what's more likely is that it's never worked throughout the whole history of the website. <laughs> <laughs> and that, so, so then for the, for the machine learning to say like, this is, this, this is going to be the effect of this thing that I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. It's that, 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 that's not like, it can't do that. That's, that's not really a machine learning problem. Um, so what the, what, what, what the, the, the guys who use forecast forge for their SEO mm -hmm. forecasts, um, do is they can make it they can make a prediction of like well this is what will happen if current trends continue um and then they can say like oh well and, and then they can layer on their own predictions on top of that saying like well if we you know if we get the new pages launched in this category we think it will increase by this much over mm -hmm. this time period um so that that's that's not really that and that that bit isn't machine learning but then the, the machine learning combines with that because it can add in what the current trend is. Uh -huh. And then you get the seasonal adjustments and stuff as part of that as well. So, you, you know, you might, uh, if you're, if you're making this kind of prediction, you don't mm -hmm. then need to seasonal, seasonally adjust it um, acro acro across the year, which is a, which is, can be a huge time saver. I can see this. I can see this as a huge time saver, as you say, for e-commerce businesses, for example, just to try and predict uh, trends and things like that. I mean, aside from any major emergencies or events, <laughs> uh, we might be able to predict whether there is uh, perhaps uh, there's going to be a surge in ticket sales or forfeit for skiing, things like that, um, aside from the usual uh, from the usual time periods as well, so I, I can see this. I can see this being a time saver, as I say, as you say. And I think it has got a little bit of attention lately on the SEO world, which has been really, really interesting. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring you in and uh, interview you, because uh, I, I think I think your tool can be kind of interesting. But now with machine learning, Python, everything else. Uh, do you think uh, do you think these these kind of um, tools are actually going to um, are going to be um, appearing again? Is there going to be any more more tools like this, or uh, this is more uh, like I, something like niche? In some, like in some ways, like I don't want the competition, but <laughs> in other in other ways, I think there is tremendous potential for like using the spreadsheet as a user interface for these machine for, for, for these machine learning machine algorithms learning. And that yeah. like there's there's a there's a whole load of machine learning that isn't forecasting that isn't really being made accessible in a spreadsheet the way that forecast forge tries to make forecasting <laughs> accessible so i think there's i think there's huge potential there for you know hundreds hundreds of tools that can mm -hmm. do, that can do Good that tool. um there's an awful lot of workflow that is log into your web tool, export the data as a CSV, mm -hmm. load it into a spreadsheet, do, do stuff with it, and then export it again somewhere else. Somewhere uh, else. Uh -huh. add, 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 add ons like Forecast Forge can cut out ah. a, lot of, uh, a, lot, a lot of the hassle with that <laughs> um, and then there's also the, and then there's they can also insert machine learning of whatever type and for whatever purpose uh in the in the middle uh in, yeah in the, in the in the in the middle of that process uh and i think yeah the thing the thing with the thing with it being in a spreadsheet is that less technical people I don't know, less technical is maybe a lot like that in my opinion there's a lot of people who have the mindset to do data science and think about these sort of problems in a really mm -hmm. interesting way but who don't have the code skills like they're, they're limited by that like their their brains are popping off with like cool <laughs> stuff that they could do but they don't like to, to implement that in python or implement that in r suddenly that becomes a massive time sink yeah for them um and uh, yeah i think i think there's loads of people like that and things like spreadsheet add-ons where they can sort of build the flow that way is um is a, is, a, is, a, is a real opportunity for in so many different areas like there's there's loads of people who are really good at spreadsheets loads of them <laughs> <laughs> and uh they can like the spreadsheet is a very powerful tool and that other people can build on it's a, it's a user interface that's very familiar and has a lot of other stuff built into it as well you know like when, mm -hmm. I, when i was thinking about like what 
what was Forecast Forge going to be like? I was thinking, okay, so I need I need a way for people to get their data in, and then mm-hmm. I want them to be able to add in other data sources alongside it, um, and they want need to be able to edit stuff too. And it was yeah, it was when I realized like, oh well, that looks pretty much like a spreadsheet. That it all started it all started to click together because then then it's like okay well rather than building like my own bad version of a spreadsheet that doesn't do like mm-hmm. 95% of what a spreadsheet does why don't i bring the forecasting to the spreadsheet and then you get you know you get things like oh it integrates with the supermetrics or the google analytics add-on or you know data studio or anything that uses sheets as a data source look like, at now you get, <laughs> yeah you get you get all that you get all that for free yeah <laughs> because it's part because it's part of the spreadsheet and um mm. that's that's not it's like extra product. stuff that i need to code on and it's you know you get you use you get a user interface that people are very familiar with and that they're you know they're able to do all kinds of weird and wonderful things that i wouldn't mm-hmm. have expected um to start with and that's always useful. That's always useful for the uh, for the users. And I can see that your uh, your approach is very user friendly, uh, which is always really really good. I wonder, I wonder how did you think about how did you um, come up with this idea about um, um, creating uh, creating uh, the, the the this product? Uh, why? Yeah, that, yeah. Is it is, is it user friendly? Well, that's a, that's an interesting. That's a, <laughs> that's an interesting one. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of sort of machine learning problems where I'm like, yeah, I guess I could try and solve this automatically, but I'm just going to let the user figure that out. <laughs> but user centric, let's say, more like user yeah, friendly, user centric, which is at the end of the day one of the best ways to actually create a product. Uh, thinking about your users rather than thinking about how best to create this and add this and that that just to create some kind of conglomerate that no yeah, one can there's use. A, there's, there's always, I think, there's always a trade off between in these tools between like how easy or how not so how simple they are to use and the power that you get um mm-hmm. or, or the, the the like flexibility that you can have with them and yeah i'm not i'm i'm much less interested in building something where it's like press this button get your forecast and that's that's like it that's that's all you can do <laughs> um <laughs> versus something that's more like forecast forge where yeah, you need to work at it a bit to get the best results, but mm-hmm. you have you have so much flexibility in what you can do. Right? You know, the, the bad side of that is that I would never have designed the iPod because it would have ended up with a million buttons <laughs> and you know th- thirty different configuration options, like a controller, but, really, like a TV controller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> classic textbook products. <laughs> yeah, so I can, yeah, so like I can, I can I can see the other side of it. But uh, it's it's kind of like a what sort of thing what sort of thing do I want to make and mm-hmm. what kind of person do I want to make it for as well mm-hmm. um, and yeah the the people who get on the best with Forecast Forge are the ones who use the full range of the flexibility that it has. Right. So um, do you see a, a a future in this product? You are continuing to develop it as well? Or is this something like a, as you, as you said, like a lockdown project that is, is there and maybe I can use it, maybe not, or side hustle? Yeah, so there's, yeah, there is, there, there is like a roadmap and there are plans. Oh, fantastic. Um, like in some way, in some ways, I want to be quite cautious with the development of it. You know, if you, if you make a forecast on Monday and then you make you try and do the same thing on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I want you to get pretty similar results <laughs> um, <laughs> at the end. I don't. I don't want anything to be, you know, like oh, well, we were forecast for massive growth on Monday, and then now it's forecast for why? Know, what happens today? Like, yeah, what's, what's what's <laughs> happened? And it's like oh, Richard changed the algorithm and didn't really communicate that to you. Um, no, of course. So that's. Um, that's something that that's something that's something that I want to avoid, and that is also like that that does limit like mm-hmm. the the kind of things that I can do. Um, but there's a lot of other like forecasting adjacent areas that I would like to move into. The big the 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 big one that's taken a lot of my attention at, at the moment is media mix modeling, uh-huh. um, and that's that's as I mentioned earlier about the 
the mechanism of like, oh, if we spend this much on this channel, mm -hmm. what are we going to get and how does that change? Um, so that's very focused in that kind of area. Uh, great area of machine learning. Very interesting. Excellent. Just trying, I just, just, just trying to figure out how to put it into the spreadsheet interface in a way that um, gives the users. I don't like part part of the problem with those systems is, or the part of the problems that I'm seeing is that the models will happily output media spend recommendations to you, mm. even if they're not very sure about how well the model has fit. <laughs> I see. Um, or like. Ha has has the model learned what we expected it to learn here <laughs> can we trust it can we trust it um so that's a whole and that, that there's a whole kind of like diagnostics and like has it fit like does mm -hmm. does, does this model work with the data you're putting into it that i think is much more important there uh, trying to figure out how to put that into the spreadsheet interface is kind of that's yeah that's that's a, that's a tricky one for me and um, also the more the more I get into that area the more I'm finding like a lot of the models aren't really learning what you expect them to learn mm. anyway so <laughs> I, I guess we are a long way to where we need to to get to, to with these models I guess um, I don't. I, I. I don't know. I don't know whether it's a limitation on the mo whether the models are a limitation or it's just a limitation of what can you learn from the mm. noisy type of data. Like if you if you've set your media spend up with with this in mind and you have mm -hmm. you know experiments going on and different geographical regions matched up and things like that, then you you're in a very very strong position for these models to be able to learn um, as good as they can. Yeah. But that's pretty. It's pretty unusual in my experience for. For, for that kind of thing to be thought of two years ago. <laughs> you know, well, people, are, people are thinking about that now, and then in two years' time, it, the, models it might have have really good, the models will have really good data to learn off, but uh, mm -hmm. that's that's not the world we're in. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, looking at our, our historical data today. I see. Well, we've got only a few minutes left. Um, if there's anything that you would like to say to the world at this moment in time, anything God. that comes through your mind what would you say what would you say to any product uh, uh, designer anyone who has come up with this idea about a fantastic product which is going to save time which is going to make our lives great what would you say to them uh keep following up with your emails i think that's the that's the <laughs> thing that i don't do very well um but that makes the biggest difference like i get i get leads i get requests from demos you know, I, I, I respond, I respond to them as they come in. Uh, sometimes people get back to me, we have a demo, sometimes they don't. Uh, but when I, you know, when I, when I follow up on those, like, oh, hey, you asked for a demo two weeks ago, are you still interested? Or, hey, you know, we spoke, we spoke last month on the demo, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Like that kind of, that kind of thing, like really help, really helps. With, <laughs> with 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 getting new subscribers, and I'm I'm really bad at it. And I'm like I don't I don't do I don't do it enough. I think. I, def I, think... I definitely believe that I definitely believe that it's possible to do that stuff too much and be a nuisance. But <laughs> uh, well, I hope I really hope that I'm not at that stage yet. <laughs> well, that happens when you are when there's only a team of one dealing with products, um, ideas development, business development. Uh, actual work as well yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you very much this was all very interesting uh richards i am going to share your the link to your products uh, so that you, you can get many requests uh, to, for demos uh, please follow them up <laughs> Yeah, I, and, yeah well, I, I, I'm good at following them. I'm good at following them up one time. I feel like <laughs> I need to be following them up maybe five times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you so much for for coming in today. It's been it's been a pleasure talking to you again after such a long time. And, yes, it's been, uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, looking forward to hearing more of your adventures with ski uh, competitions and uh, uh, burger meats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll, I'll try. I'll try and tweet any interesting meals that uh, I might have, or interesting meats, anyway. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> All right. Bye for now.